Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I received a few questions from people when I spoke about the age of our Ummuna Khadija radiallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen when she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many seem to be extremely surprised to know that she was not 40 when she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and many have been in Islam for 40 years and still believe it strongly. Well, the real fact is that she was not 40 years of age. So where did this idea of 40 years come? But before going into explaining why and providing you the evidences so that you know there is some kind of Islam that is being marketed to you, but that actually it's not completely true. As a response to this big problem, I am going to start a new series called Correct Your History Knowledge about the life of Rasulullah because there are about 50 to 100 things that are not true but they are widely spread today in between the Muslims. One of them is how old or the age of our mother Khadija radiallahu anha and few other things you'll be surprised. But I will start this series as I said. But I want to say something to you here. All what I am going to say to you exists in the Arabic books. Anyone that can go to a library right here in London that sells books and will pick up the books that I tell you with, for example, Ibn Kathir, Ali, Rahmatullah, and all this, you will find what I'm going to tell you in there. The problem with Muslims today is they do not read. They take one thing, and that's it. They make it as a complete fact. It's a belief, unshakable belief. Then when suddenly you get surprised, like today with the age of our Umna Khadija, it shakes you to the core. You've actually been believing in something all these years. And that thing is absolutely bonkers. It's wrong. It's, uh, but how did that come? Well, one day somebody translated a text from the Arabic. And that translator did not have enough knowledge to find out that what he translated or what she translated was weak. Now what happened is they made it a business. Books that are printed here in the West are not like they were before. Before our scholars wrote books or wrote books for the knowledge. Today it's a business. It's a business and copyrights and you're not allowed to print this. So for people to keep writing, they don't care what they got the information with. So they take, so for example, someone read one day in, as I will say to you, the wrong evidence that she was 40. He or she translated it into English and suddenly that became the only book available and taughtable. So it was taught around. And you as a, long, a young child, from that book you got 40, and in a classroom, all it needs is one person that says 40 in the classroom. 10, 10 people would believe 40. And then you're going to teach it to your children, and, 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 until today someone comes and says, ha, 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 that 40 is absolutely not true. And you get shaken to the core. And there are lots more that I will share with you under, as I said, correct your history knowledge. Because there are a lot of things about our prophet, our, about our history, that a lot of people do not know at all. And I probably after this one, I will upload another super, super pep talk about our Islamic history, 12 centuries in less than an hour. So, our Khadija ibn al-Khuwayd, our mother Khadija, how old was she? The idea of the 40 was reported in Tabaqat ibn Sa'd. There is a book of tarikh, history, and uh, it's called Tabaqat ibn Sa'd, or the layers of ibn Sa'd. And this man, ibn Sa'd, reported this argument of 40 from another sheikh called Al-Waqidi. So you know who Al-Waqidi is, so, who, uh, so that you know Al-Waqidi. Who is Al-Waqidi? He was born on the, in the year of 130 after the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is around 120 years after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu The great Al-Imam Al-Zahabi, which is one of the pillars of Hadith alayhi rahmatullah, he says that this man has gathered the thick and thin, the precious and the vile, and he mixed them all together. Al-Imam Abu Dawood, the man who writes, when you say Sunan Abu Dawood, Rawaha Abu Dawood, narrated by Abu Dawood, Abu Dawood says, I do not write his hadith because he used to copy the hadith and he does not double check his information at all. I do not take his hadith at all. 
النسائي عليه رحمة الله الغسل الإمام النسائي has said that he doesn't take the hadith at all الإمام البخاري and others also do not take this hadith at all and he is one of those people that is accused of lying and fabrication and things like that this man is the one who said 40 years of age but in so many other books of the seerah subhanallah there has been a difference of opinion for example Al-Imam Al-Hakim is one of the great scholars of Al-Hadith. One of the students also of the great Imam of Al-Dara Qutni, and they used to coexist in the same era as Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And this Imam has written, alayhi rahmatullah, i.e. Al-Hakim, a book called Al-Mustadrak or Al-Mustadrik on Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Where those Ahadith which fulfilled their criteria and Al-Bukhari and Muslim didn't put in their books, he put it in seven to ten volumes, depending on which form or print of the book you got. Al-Imam Ali Rahmatullah Al-Hakim says that and he had a chain of narrators to Ibn Ishaq. And as I said also at one point that the narrations of Imam Ibn Ishaq are weak, and so are Ibn Hisham. They also have mixed up a lot of the weak and the fabricated and the strong and the black and the white and the pink and the green. And their books of hadith are narrated. Sometimes uh, these guys have existed, as I said, over 100 years later. But they just would say, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, and they would write this thing, what he said, as if they were there. This is why the books of the seerah of Ibn Hisham and Ibn Ishaq and Al-Waqidi and Tabaqat Ibn Sa'd and all these things, they are now being put under microscope. And as I said, I'm going to divulge to you up to a hundred things that you still believe strongly that they are true, but actually they are not. And the first one of them today is the hadith about the age of our mother, Aisha radiallahu anha. Al-Imam Al-Hakim alayhi rahmatullah brought a hadith with his chain of narrator until he reached al-imam Ibn Ishaq alayhi rahmatullah and he says وَكَانَ لَهَا يَوْمَ تَزَوَّجَهَا ثَمَانِ وَعِشْرُونَ سَنَةً 28 years and he says and she had the day he married her صلى الله عليه وسلم 28 years but Ibn Ishaq did not put the chain of narrator between him to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم but al Imam al Hakim alayhi rahmatullah, what he did, he found another chain of narrators that goes to Hisham ibn Urwa radiallahu anha, where he spoke about the death of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha to support the argument that she died end of 27, beginning of 28. Al Imam al Bayhaqi, one of the great scholars of hadith, also wrote in his book Al Dala'il, and also he says she was in between 28. And it was also said she was 25. So you see, the argument between the great scholars of the hadith that you haven't heard of is between 25 to 28, not 38 and 40. And Ibn Kathir, alayhi rahmatullah, the great man of the tafsir, all of you know Imam Ibn Kathir, he goes, and this, وَهَكَذَا نَقَلَ الْبَيْهَقِي عَنِ الْحَاكِمِ And this is how Imam al-Bayhaqi has reported on the authority of Imam al-Hakim, the, uh, the one who's wrote uh, al-Hakim al mustadrik that her age was 25, between 25 to 28. My dear brothers and my sisters, as you can see here, because you have been believe in this something wrong here of the 40 years so when the true knowledge comes that she, her age was between 25 to 28 and some scholars 27 26 20 but it doesn't make much a difference but as you can see here how much of islam that you know that actually cannot be substantiated and believe me there is tons of it tons of it this is why i'm going to start on a weekly basis a, a talk, many talk like this one, five to ten minutes about correcting your history, correcting the knowledge of the seerah. So as you can see, what you are going to learn in this group is going to shake you to the ground because you are going to discover that throughout time you have been told a lot of wrong stuff, a lot of weak stuff, a lot of nonsense stuff. And here you are today when you are given this gift of the truth, you are feeling all what's that. Alhamdulillah. Any sheikh worth his weight in gold or salt or whatever it is, just let him go. And I've given the, the evidences in Arabic. If he is an Arabic reader, he will find these evidences. Alhamdulillah, no big deal. My big problem is with those Arabic-less Islam uh, so-called sheikhs, non-Arabic, non English-only Islam. I call them EOS. 
English only, no Arabic uh, sheikhs. This is the problem. Those who copy, paste. Those who read in a book and they don't even have the tools to double check the knowledge from the roots. And most of the ignorance that we have in WhatsApp, ignorance, the WhatsApp of knowledge that we get in WhatsApp is absolutely detrimental for the love of Allah. Stop just taking clips or these cut things or Allah says in the Quran this and in English. All these are statements of disbelief and major sins for the love of Allah. Stop. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha to the closest of uh, the speculations of the uh, shuyukh alayhi wa rahmatullah was between 25 to 28 or as some of them said late 27 beginning 28. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is enough and this will should set your heart at rest. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. If you want to some, know some more, you can text me on or WhatsApp me on 078 76 40 Or you can email me at eljadis e l dot j a l double e s at gmail.com for the love of Allah watch out what you are going or what you are learning because it is your Jannah you don't want to go to Qabr only to know oh I thought she was 40 oh I thought it was this I thought it was that your duty is to learn the true Islam and be in Allah stay in this group here and I will make it easy for you to get to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to this is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa السلام عليكم ورحمة الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك